The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648 or internationally at 727 445 1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the April 13th magical Monday edition of Hour 2 of The Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and hope that each of you had a fantastic weekend. Let's make sure that you and I do everything in our power to have an extraordinary day, an extraordinary week. Of course, let's always remember what's talked about is a dream. What's envisioned is exciting. What's planned becomes possible. What's scheduled is real. And I want to thank you for scheduling your time with me. I'm honored by your presence here, and I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial in at 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, you can call us at 727-445-1044. Remember, if you've got a question, somebody else got that exact same question. So a nice little random act of kindness. You calling in for them. That's the way to kickstart your day, no matter what it is that you're doing. This is magnificent and magical Monday, of course, is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow's up 37 points, trading at 18,094. S&P up four points at 2,106. NASDAQ composite up four tenths of a percent, up 22 points. Strong like bull out here. Russell 2000 up a quarter of a percent, up three points out here. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 up uh, 21. The New York Stock Exchange is basically flat out here. Hmm something to think about it's up three dollars and fifty cents out there what was doing all the heavy lifting in the past in order to pull these markets up was the new york stock exchange seems to be exhausted that is the message as we speak right now and that says that is something for us to uh, pay attention to nonetheless let's go start by taking a look at what's going on inside of the uh, etf structures for the indices let's go take a look at the qqq series etf if we take a look at it uh, what we can see is we post my chart inside the den. I most certainly can. Give me a moment to do that. Uh, you guys need to be able to follow along with me. Otherwise, hey, that's no fun. So let's go take a look at the QQQ chart together. As we take a look at it, it's trading out at 108 and a quarter, 3.9 million shares as we speak right now. The key level that we want to be watching here is really the swing point from March the 2nd, the bottom of which is 108.59. That is where the QQQs are headed to. Most likely where they're really headed to is going to be the uh, top of that, uh, which is the February 3rd high. We're looking at 109.42. That's got 30 million shares out there. So you got two swing points to really uh, benchmark and monitor. One would be March 20th. Uh, but if it can reach March 20th, that's got 31 million shares. The lighter volume here, even on March the 2nd, I would say that its target is likely going to be the March 2nd level. So we will watch that. We will. We know that, uh, hey, now, everybody should be back from holiday. Last week, week before, the uh, volume aspect, um, you know, not, not what should be really anticipated. It should have been anticipated because you had so many people that were on uh, vacation. Um, uh, not you and I, but uh, you, well, maybe you were on vacation. If you were, welcome back from vacation out there. So you got the 108.59 uh, level to 109.42 inside of the QQQ series ETF. Um, if we take a look at what's going on inside the Russell 2000, the IWM, the Russell 2000, we know it's got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. That takes you to 129, maybe 131 out here. Right now, today, it is actually inside and testing its swing point high. So maybe from the Russell 2000, where we get key information that's that swing point here it's next swing point which is march 23rd only 17 million shares there you've done 2 million shares in the first uh, 42 minutes of trading out here so it's got enough volume to certainly take that on it doesn't even have to necessarily keep up this pace out here um, although actually it does need to keep up this pace so at this stage of the game the iwm has got light volume nonetheless any close inside 125.79 that offers to us the promise of 126.32 you take out 126.32 you do that with volume then you have a couple like what we'll call a double confirmation uh to the move up into that 129 ish area that's what's going on inside of the russell 2000 let's go take a look at the spy out here the spy up 
39 cents, 11.7 million shares. Again, all these markets are basically doing the same thing. In the case of the SPY, it's just trying to get back to the February 25th swing point, the top or the bottom of which is uh, 211.22, the top of which is 212.24. You'd have to say based on these other swing point tests out here from March the 18th, on March 23rd, that's at 211.22, where uh, price is likely headed to. Now, if price can move inside there with more than 73 million shares, you've done about 12 million so far. Uh, that would say you would go test the high 212.24. Of course, you want to need to see it close above 211.22, but it does look like that is the number where the SPY is likely headed to. If we go take a look at the Dow Diamonds, the DIA, as so we take a look at the Dow Diamonds, she's trading out at 180.73. It also wants to get back to its uh, swing point. That swing point from the uh, March 2nd level, that's 181.37 to 182.68. Only 3.2 million shares. You've done 566 as we speak right now. You got to assume at this stage, 181.37, it's almost like a foregone conclusion. You're trading at 180.75 as we speak right now. Now, inside the Dow, if we go take a look at its summation index, that's in a nice bullish condition. It's reaching for higher highs as we speak at 1014 a.m. You can see inside the Dow very close to its swing point that it is uh, headed towards, and that is the March 2nd swing point. That bottom is 18122 out here. Uh, what we can see is that the uh, Dow, the April 13th swing point low is 18043. So you're only talking about, what, another... Uh, 80 points out there that it uh 18 i'm sorry that was the low 18105 18105 versus 18122 uh, should be a heartbeat away from being able to test that a close inside the 18122 that offers the promise of going and testing the high the high inside of the dow being that uh, 18288 level now you might ask yourself hey how come the diamonds how come of the uh, diamonds out there looks like it's got further to run than the actual Dow does? Well, the diamonds are adjusting for the ETF is adjusting for uh, is adjusting for dividends, whereas the actual index is not out there. So that's why you've got the uh, difference. That's why we go ahead and take a look at at both. We actually go ahead and take a look at the uh, Dow futures contracts just to really try to tie it all together out there. So the uh, Dow diamonds, I'd say the key number to be watching here for the diamonds is really the Dow itself. 18, 122, 59. You close inside that, that's as it goes ahead and likely makes a run for that high. It should make a run for that high out there. And that's from that trading session here on uh, March the 2nd. If I take a look at that price oscillator, it's not just rising, it's rising and making uh, new highs as we speak uh, today. So it's got the promise that suggests that those highs get uh, tested and tagged. There are some potential problems in uh, River City out here. Not a lot, but there are some potential problems. I mentioned the New York Stock Exchange. Let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange index out here. Let's go ahead and put that on my uh, chart. That is up one point, two points today. Now, inside the New York Stock Exchange, Let's pull this back uh, just a, a tad out here. So here we've got the NYSE, and we can see that it is its, it's swing point that it's dealing with is right here, February 23rd. That's the weekly chart. Let me get back to the daily chart. No wonder I couldn't find that hammer candle out here. There's the hammer candle. There's the bullish engulfing. That was on April Fool's Day on April 1st. So we can see that you've got this little doji candle that it's uh, trading into, which is a swing point high from the daily basis, which is February 25th. You're already inside that level. 11,097.79. Not a whole heck of a lot of strength today. It should have the ability to go test 11,142. As long as price doesn't reject the bottom of that swing point, 11097, price ought to at least get up and test 11142. Now, the New York Stock Exchange, which had been doing all the heavy lifting in the markets, it was the indice that was saying that the move, the recent move, uh, the recent, recent gyrations that we have uh, seen out here, the ones back in the uh, middle of March, the ones uh, from April 1st out here, it was the indice that was saying, uh uh, no way, we're not going lower out here. And it was sending out invitations to say, come on, come on and join me. We want to move higher out here. Uh, it was the strongest. The next strongest out here was the Russell 2000. But both of them had done so much work, they're, it's like they're exhausted. Now, I think they had a weekend to rest out here. That weekend to rest, man, they should be able to take off zoom, zoom, zoom. But they're not.
And the question is why? I don't know the answer why. Looks like I have this tool turned on. I want to turn this tool off. I don't want those lines on there. They don't mean anything. Okay. Um, and I don't know the, I, I just know that they're exhausted. And that's not really a good sign out here. So uh, um, this is caution. It just says, uh, you know, Stevie says the market makes a high into May 4th. I still believe that, but I think along the way we might have a couple, we may have a detour. We may have a detour. So we'll pay attention to see if we do. But right now, New York Stock Exchange, it's not doing a whole lot. And that's not really a good, healthy sign for the uh, markets out here. Uh, let's go take a look at... Um so that, that covers the ETFs, uh, at least the uh, Qs, the IWM spies, and the uh, diamonds for you. Let's go take a look at uh, what's going on inside of Apple. Apple here out with their iWatch on uh, release the uh, orders for the iWatch uh, being uh, taking place on the Monday. Guess what? They sold about a million watches out there. I don't know if that's good, if it's bad. Here's what we know about Apple, though. Prices uh, gapped up this morning. It's run right into resistance of its TAS market profile high out here. So as we take a look at it, that market profile high, 128.50, uh, I'm sorry, 128.58 is the uh, number. You close above that, that uh, then starts to get a bit more bullish. Otherwise, Apple's run into uh, resistance out here at that 128. 58 level. If we go take a look at uh, the XLK itself, we look at the technology sector with inside the S&P 500. Uh, she's not been able to get all the way back up to even its swing points here from March 23rd. So wasn't able to bust out the lows. It most certainly was unable to do that. Those lows being that March 13th area. We saw tests on lighter volume. 15 million shares was tested with 9 million shares. But you're not able to bust out the highs either. Now we're not into its most recent highs. Those taking place between March 23rd. 20th, 23rd, let's see, which one is it? 20, uh, the 20th, which you got 19 million shares. You've done 1 million shares today in just under an hour of trading. No volume in the XLK, but it hasn't tested the swing point. It has not released any info to you or me. Dow's up 29, S&P's up 3. We'll be right back, folks. told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. 
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 47, S&P 5, uh, composite up 27. Uh, let's go out to uh, Spokane, Washington, to uh, Jim, who's listening in on KSBN. Hey, Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Well, I'm doing fine. How about yourself? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. You have a nice weekend? You betcha. Oh, good. You watch any of the golf? Are you a golfer? No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Uh, and, and even still, did uh, the Masters, uh, you know, golf tournament, uh, Take it or leave it. Basically, leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. I won't hold that against you. I'll still give you good advice. I appreciate that. You want to take a look at two stocks, um, at least. One is a Caterpillar. C-A-T is a ticker symbol. Tell me what you're doing, how I can help you there. Well, I've been watching it here lately, and it's kind of bouncing around. It uh, looks like a low there, kind of. I just thinking about uh, going long here soon. <laughs> And and uh, can I the the time frame that you're looking to for this position? Are you a intermediate time frame uh, trader? What's the time period you're looking at? I'd say probably intermediate. All right. Yeah. Uh, here's uh, so if we take a look at um, you know so when it comes to Caterpillar, let me put this on a weekly time frame chart for you first to take a look at it. You know it's just been hanging out at these uh, lows out here and so as i pull this back i'll give you the positive the positive is that uh it's traded all the way back to july of 2012 from the low standpoint and i would say this to you i would say as long as you don't see it close below uh 78 dollars and 25 cents that uh, you know, okay, maybe it's maybe it's time to go ahead and take a longer term, um, you know, approach uh, for this. Um, it had on a weekly basis a little bit of a sign of uh, well, it no, it didn't. It uh, well, it had a real big weakness, sign of weakness. The week that began January 26, there was a big volume bar to the downside of 67 million shares. So the good news for you there is that that level was tested a couple of times with light volume. I would say since this is more of an intermediate term trade, if you're looking for a buy on this, instead of jumping in at 82.44, why don't you put in a, a buy order at about $80.39? Okay. And that's your TAS market profile support level at $80.39. That's what the weekly um, shows as a good area. And then your stop would be underneath that low that I had given you earlier, which um, I don't remember the price. Did you write that down by any chance? Or? No, didn't, didn't catch it. Didn't catch. Let me go back and give that to you. Because what you don't want to do is really see it close below that 2012 level. Because if it does that, again, that price here is... Uh, is uh, 7840, 7825. 
or if it does close below that, what you're likely to see is a run down to about 67.54. So you have to do the math to determine whether or not you would want to take that kind of heat or pressure out there. Okay. So that's what the more intermediate term chart uh, shows us, uh, Jim. Right. On a, a daily basis out here, just looking at the daily chart, um, $80.10 would be a number if it could pull back and test that. That you know might be okay. Um, I'm not seeing a whole lot here. Are you deciding between Caterpillar and is it uh, NE ticker symbol NE? That's a Noble Corp. Are you are you just are, is that just a, a secondary issue that you're looking at? Or are you trying to decide between the two? No, I'm just kind of thinking about both of them. Both of them. You know, okay. since that um, NE oil's been kind of bouncing around there, you know, for at lows and stuff. So that's kind of absolutely okay. So this is this is an oil uh, equity out here. I'm not familiar with the with yeah. the. Uh, Okay. Um, you know, this actually, so I guess along with oil, because oil's had a fairly decent bounce, uh, this stock chart here looks a little bit better uh, than uh, that Caterpillar uh, does. You know, I, I guess on Caterpillar, I guess the, uh, the interesting thing would be if I put up the uh, stock chart of the, uh, of the U.S. dollar index against it, um, just to see what kind of correlation there might be there. Uh, you know, so it might be, you know, weaker dollar is better for that stock than a stronger dollar. Yeah. Um, you know, just one uh, one additional influencing factor. Whereas when we take a look at Noble Corp, obviously you're dealing with the influencing factor of light sweet crude, right? Because this thing, just as light sweet crude had made a high back in July, uh, Noble Corp made its high back in uh, June. So at least in this, at least in this equity here, oh, actually, boy, I take this thing back. This thing's been going down. Let me pull this back even further. Do you know much about this company? Um, no, I no, I don't. Just wondering oh. why it it actually topped out back in November of 2013, um, and uh, and I don't think oil topped out in November 2013. Tell you what, can you hang on through this break? I'll you check Okay, we'll go back to uh, Jim. We'll go take a look at uh, Noble Corp. But specifically, again, we'll go take a look at uh, maybe what I'll put on the, a, a chart for uh, Jim is we'll go ahead and we'll put Lightspeed Crude up. We'll see how that tracks Noble Corp. We'll be right back, folks. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They they believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone phone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach out levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 43, S&P's up 5, uh, Composite's up uh, 25. We're going back out to Spokane, Washington, to uh, Jim, uh, and we're taking a look at uh, both uh, Caterpillar and uh, Noble uh, Corp. Now, Jim, during the uh, break, I know you're listening on the uh, your radio. I believe you are. Um, but if you, or are you listening on your radio? No, actually, I'm not. I, my uh, live stream doesn't work very well, so I'm I'm not listening on the ra on the computer or radio. Okay, okay. Um, watch it. Which, so when I take a look at Noble Corp specifically, so that's one that we had left off on. And what I've done here is the top portion of my chart, which, uh, folks, if you're listening on a radio, you can uh, catch the archive of this on Channel 10. So it'll be up sometime probably like around 1130 or so. And the bottom of the chart is light, sweet, crude. And if you take a look at these two charts, you would be hard pressed to tell the uh, the directional price difference in either of these charts. It looks like I really copied the same thing, but the reality is I haven't. The top portion of the chart is a uh, Noble Corp. The bottom portion of the chart is Light Sweet Crude. For the most part, there are periods of times, very short periods of time, where the direction maybe becomes a little bit unhinged. But for the most part. It's uh, pretty much uh, dead smack on. So with regard to uh, Noble, I would just uh, pose this question, I guess, uh, you know, are you, so it's an oil, it's, it's clearly a, uh, the, it's the, a huge influencing factor is light sweet crude, which it sounds like you knew that anyways. So are you believing also that light sweet crude has hit a bottom and a bottom where you're going to, you know, for the, for a long period of that, that it's a bottom and it's just simply going to move higher over the longer period of time. Yeah. I kind of think it's hit, hit the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So then if, if you believe that light sweet crude has hit um, the bottom, then Noble Corp is 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 a trade for you for sure. Okay. You know because it's it's clearly its largest influencing influencing directional factor. Um, you know is is light sweet crude. I would say that you know we haven't seen any kind of sign of strength off of the bottom, um, which you would like to see. I would say that in the case of Noble Corp, it has completed or is completing an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It's done what's referred to as a 1 to 1.272 pattern to the upside. So it could pull back here. Um, you know, if you're waiting for a pullback, you'd love to see this come back and test 1459. Okay. 
get straight at 16, 14. Um, but maybe it's something you want to scale in. But your overall bigger trade is it's almost as if you're trading light sweet crude more so than you are um, Noble Corp. In the case of uh, Caterpillar, that's the next chart that I'll – oh, son of a gun. Um, that, 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 that had changed symbols. Oh, I forgot to change something here. So let me put Caterpillar up on my screen here for you. So we'll do the same thing. The difference is in the case of Caterpillar, the top portion of the chart is Caterpillar, and the bottom portion of my chart is the U.S. dollar index. Just to understand the influencing factor there. Because in the case of Caterpillar, for the most part, you're trading, it's a currency trade. All right as we speak right now. So, and now what I've done with the U.S. dollar index is I've inverted it, meaning that if the U.S. dollar index is moving lower, that's a stronger dollar, which should be putting pressure inside of that caterpillar, just so that the directional aspect is easier to, to monitor. So, yeah, you'd have to say with the euro being, and maybe you don't trade currencies or you don't pay attention to them, but in essence, I think the part of the trade that you would be making there is the belief that the euro has hit a, a bottom. And if you're of the belief that the euro has not hit a bottom because, you know, you believe that with quantitative easing that's going on over there, then I would say that Caterpillar probably isn't the place for you to, to look at. Because if it hasn't hit a bottom and it's going to go lower, the U.S. dollar index is going to get stronger just because of its weighting structure inside of that indice. Yeah. Um, and that's how that's how I would look at it. So I pose that question. Do you even think about the currencies? Do you think much about the euro? You know, what are your thoughts there, if any? Yeah, I have been watching the dollar. And so, and uh, yeah, watching it go up. It seems it's going up and up and up. And so, yeah, so that's kind of making me hold off on, on getting into cat. Yeah, I, I would say that I would I would make that part of your your influencing decision on whether or not you would want to, you know, to to go ahead and take a, a longer term trade in Caterpillar. If you're of the belief, you know, that the euros hit a, a bottom out there or a good intermediate term bottom, then I would say that uh, that this is a this would be the trade for you. But if your belief is a little bit different, then maybe you want to just continue to watch it, look around and wait till your opinion changes that, hey, OK, the the euro is done moving lower. Uh, what, what's your uh, what's your belief? Do you think the euro is gonna it's bottoming out or the I would I would say that um, I did have that belief, but the euro uh, right now is uh, trying to it's 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 in it's kind of like in the nowhere. Uh, zone out here. What I mean by that, it's trading inside, this is on daily chart, it's trading inside the March 16th uh, swing point. Uh, and the high on that, Jim, is 106.19 and the low is 104.59. And whenever price trades inside the swing point until it either rejects it um, or breaks through it, you just don't know. So uh, at this stage here, um, I can easily make the case, well, if it breaks 1.0459 and I put the euro back on a longer term chart, if I put it on a monthly chart, I believe the monthly chart says that this actually wants lower price. So on, because you're looking at a longer term um, play inside of, uh, of a Caterpillar, this really says that the euro more than likely wants to get down to 99 cents. Okay. You know, on the longer term patterns out here, um, there's nothing that is actually bullish other than it's extremely oversold but at this stage here that's probably more bearish than it is anything else okay okay what, yeah now what, what's your take on um oil do you think it's uh reached the bottom or what so in the case of oil um there's two currency pairs that you that that one who trades oil should always follow in my opinion i don't know if i have that chart here um, but those currency pairs are the uh the mexican peso and the i do have those charts let me see it and the uh and the uh, uh canadian dollar oh. and and what i would really have to do is uh, and I haven't studied this. I haven't I haven't looked at light sweet crude here for a bit because it's it's really it's more of a day trading almost kind of vehicle okay. with the volatility. But those two currency pairs they track oil actually you know be, in my opinion better than the U.S. dollar index for whatever reason. Well, because Mexico you know is a you know is an is an oil factor, um, and so so I, I I haven't seen when I take a look at the U.S. dollar Canadian dollar. And the charts I have up on my screen, and I take a look at the Mexican peso versus the U.S. dollar, I, I don't see anything here that shows me that those two currency pairs have bottomed. 
Okay. So, from a longer term standpoint, I'm not. Um, it, there's there's not a clear signal to me that the bottom is in. Okay. But you know, you may. Uh, uh, and and I think maybe more so. I don't think we're going to see a huge move up in oil. Okay. I think that's really more so the message that I'm looking at. Alrighty. Okay. Okay. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for calling in. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. You bet. That was Jim in uh, Spokane. Um, let's take a look at. Um, let's take a look at. Uh, so the Dow is up 34. S and P is up four. The energy sector. So Jim was talking about energy. And the energy sector has actually been pretty much on fire inside the S and P 500. The XLE. It's had a nice bounce. Now this is the monthly chart. Let's go put the uh, daily chart on the screen out here. Let's go see what kind of message we might uh, find in this. So inside of the XLE, the energy sector, it's actually made the 0.786 retracement here this morning. That high, or uh, so far that we've seen in the XLE, is eight. $80.60. Now, the actual 0.786 retracement comes in at 80.59. Um, you've seen the second bearish reversal candle uh, that uh, this has formed within the past uh, four or five trading sessions, but it needs to have some additional follow through. Now, unfortunately for the energy sector, it's made a 0.786 retracement. I suppose if I really stretch things out, I can find an A to B equals CD pattern, and it would look like this. And the uh, this has made a 0.786 Gertley sell pattern out here. It's done that in essence today. If you saw some follow through tomorrow, it would say that we're likely going to see a retracement inside of the energy sector, the XLE. Now, I believe that's only like the fifth weighting structure inside of the S&P 500. So it won't be a hu as huge an influencing factor as the XLK, the XLV. And the XLF, I believe those are the top three um, uh, weightings inside of the S&P 500. Uh, but if you do see some additional uh, follow through tomorrow to the downside, and assuming that the XLE closes here, this could easily reverse and we'd have no bearish reversal signal whatsoever. Uh, then inside the XLE, but if you do get that bearish reversal signal, you could expect to see a retracement down to about 76.41. 7801 is your debt cap bounce, your 0.382 retracement. But 7641 might actually be a nice buy, setting up your A to B, setting up a nice A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. And the reason why I say that is because 7619 happens to be your TAS market profile high out there. Uh, so coming back to that level would be, uh, might, might set up as a nice trade, assuming that the pullback is on light bond, because you did have that nice big wide price spread day on March the 18th, 27 million shares to the upside. So that's what's going on inside of that. Uh, sector as well. Let's look at a couple of things that are moving uh, to the downside. Uh, in the last hour, we only got to a couple of uh, equities moving to the upside. So let's go take a look at some things moving to the downside. We've got Cormark Holdings. I don't show any earnings uh, out with this, but uh, we do see a nice uh, wide-ranging bar to the uh, downside. It's a daily chart we're looking at, and it's done 169,000 shares. Now, as we take a look at this equity, this thing has uh, had some volume off of its uh, highs. This may be the all-time high out here that it did. Yeah, it is. This thing made a high, looks like on February 26th, and then two days later, um, and I can't tell if that was an earnings date. Let me, I thought I had those on my, turned down on my system. I just want to check. Because um, maybe earnings have already been out on this thing. Where is the? Uh, there we go. Earnings labels. Let's see. That was an earnings date. So the earnings inside this equity is already out. That's C O R E is the uh, ticker symbol, and uh, they certainly disappointed or something because you had volume of uh, 874,000 shares to the downside. It looks like uh, this is setting up nothing more than an A to B equals C D to the downside with your A point being that all-time high, your B point being down here on March the 11th, and a C point coming in on April the 2nd. It looks like this equity uh, wants to trade down to 53 bucks, maybe 49.50. Uh, if it breaks 57.99, that's what it wants to do. And that is ticker symbol C-O-R-E. We've got proof print, P-F-P-T is the uh, ticker symbol out here, off about 5.5% uh, today, down with a volume of 183,000 shares. 183,000 shares. Now, this thing has been in a nice uptrend, still in a nice uptrend out here. But let's go see if, in fact, that is actually intact. Now, the uptrend that we're going to look at, we're going to start with our swing point from October 15th, 2014. That's our touch point. And uh, let's see, where is it really? 
you'd almost have to say that's probably the trend line. So if this equity breaks that uh, trend line out here to the uh, downside, that would mean get below April 6th, uh, then this equity is showing you a change in trend, short-term change in trend perhaps because it only goes back to October of 2014. Uh, that is ticker symbol PFPT. Otherwise, the uh, uptrend is still intact out there. Let me see. Percentage-wise, what do we have big to the downside? Not a whole lot. Let's try a couple of names that are maybe more familiar. Let's take a look at the Zillow, a Z being the ticker symbol here. It's off about two bucks, two and a half dollars, down two and a half percent as well. Let's go take a look at this equity is uh, trading all the way back into this little high volume swing point low, which has been tested a couple of different times. Now, Zillow be kind of an interesting uh, trade. If it can test a 94.23, hold that level, which means close back above it, do less than four and a half million shares out here. Um, maybe this sets up a, a decent trade. It's got this high volume bar out here um, from it's got several of them. Actually, it's got one from February 18th and that's got 10.5 million shares. It's pulled back on way later volume, but it's well below that swing point, uh, way below that to high, I should say. Now it's pulling back into this uh, swing point area from November. But there's also a nice high volume high from back in July of 2014. And that says that, and that's at its all time high. That says that Zillow wants to eventually make a run for 164.90. It's trading at 95 bucks right now. <clears throat> I'm just looking. I wish I could see some other pattern inside of Zillow, some other type of bottoming pattern inside of uh, Zillow to uh, give to you. All that we really have to work off of are these uh, swing points from back here, which basically were November uh, in January of 2015. Uh, in January, again, January 2015. So that's kind of giving us this. Uh, it's not kind of, it's actually giving us the range of 92.41 to 92.43 inside of Zillow. If it breaks through that area, you're going to be able to get this on sale at a much, much lower price out there because depending on how it would break those areas, it could actually form a very large J to B equals CD to the upside. But nonetheless, Zillow is something because... It just doesn't have any real huge volume to the downside. Probably something you want to have on your uh, radar list uh, as uh, as an equity. This day, 2015, it truly is a stock pickers market out there because the indices have done zilch. Nada. Not too much. We'll be right back, folks. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. 
Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 25. The S&P is up 3. Composite's up 22. The Russell's uh, gotten a little bit of a juice inside of its move here this morning. It's up $5.50. So, uh, look, as your, as your captain, with you being the co-pilot, uh, would you go ahead and uh, throw on that uh, throw on that uh, fasten your seatbelt sign? Because I do believe we are at that stage inside the uh, market. Whether it's not necessarily necessarily at 10:54 a.m., but uh, at 10:54 a.m., we want to make sure that your seatbelts are fastened out here because the ride could get a little bit uh, bumpy. In fact, we might see a little bit of change in the altitude as far as where we're flying at out here. Uh, that's just really the signals I mentioned earlier in the uh, show. If we were taking a look at markets, you got the New York Stock Exchange, the one that was doing all the heavy lifting here, straight and negatively right now. And now it's not off a ton. It's down uh, four points, but uh, it sends a, a, a fairly strong message. Um, we talked about how the uh, Russell 2000, the futures contract, ought to have uh, gone and tested its swing point high uh, from uh, March 23rd. Okay, it's above it right now. So here's key. So we've now at least got a, a test of one of the strongest. This was as strong as the New York Stock Exchange with regard to making that uh, shorter term a bottom. Maybe it's a longer term bottom pattern out here. Um, I'm uncertain about that. And you know, there are times when I'm uncertain. And, I'm, and many times I have conviction. I like to show up uh, each day to the microphone with conviction. I don't think it does you a whole lot of good for me to not have conviction out here. But there have to be times where uh, you have a bit of... Uh, where you're a bit of, maybe it's a bit of fog, right? You don't have that clarity uh, going through here. The clarity, though, is, hey, can price uh, close above 1265.20 inside the Russell 2000? If it does, that would be a uh, potentially set up an A to B equals C to the upside. If it rejects that area, closes back down below 1265, Okay, maybe it's not ready to uh, bust it out. The New York Stock Exchange, well, let me take a look at the other. So uh, what other tests do we have going on? you got the ES Mini. Okay, so the S&P Futures now has gotten up to that 2100 level. 2100, even Stephen, was the bottom of the swing point from February 25th. So we want to watch that area too, your 2098.50. Uh, um, you know, either if we take a look at the... Uh, 
a five hour energy chart out here. You can see this nice little rising price channel that is in place, these diagonal blue lines going up on my chart. We can see that coming off of a low back here at 2300 hours back on March 31st, we have now gotten into what looks like is the seventh wave uh, session out here. Now the five hour chart, this uh, candle doesn't finish till 2 p.m. Then you need the next five hours after that in essence to confirm that, uh, that seventh inning stretch, but it's an area where you've got to be uh, cautious as this has made a 100% move of move. Um, you know, is there, it, have we seen a, a turn yet? No, the answer is no. But the New York Stock Exchange is uh, absolutely sent out a message to fasten those seatbelts. Either we're going to catapult and take out these highs and on the uh, daily basis uh, take up a, that's interesting. Oh, uh, there we go. We got that, that sound. Let's do that again. Let me hear that again. Oh, I like that. You got to love, you got to love our guy, Al, inside, you know, man, where would we be without a producer in life out there? I hope you've got as good a producer as we do here at uh, TFNN. Uh, so um, so you've got some swing points being tested. So we're at critical levels. you got these seventh wave patterns that are out here that says potential critical levels. Uh, no no signal here that says, hey, jump on the uh, short side of any kind of a uh, trade out here. Just simply we've got some uh, stormy weather uh, that is uh, ahead of us. Um, and, and therefore, you want to have your seatbelts fastened on. That could all change by about 11.07, 11.08 when uh, our man Basil Chapman comes on. So stay tuned. We've got Basil coming up next. Uh, don't recall if Larry is back or not at this stage. But we've got a, a great lineup for you as always. Thanks so much for joining us here at TFNN. Uh, have a, a great Monday. And I look forward to seeing you bright and early tomorrow morning. Keep those seatbelts fastened, folks. We'll be right uh, Take care. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.